Well, hey y'all, good morning. Today is Thursday, February 16th. My name is Alicia and you have perhaps stumbled across the Fanciful Flamingo Floss Tube channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for taking a minute and stopping and checking me out. And if you're one of my returning chit chat friends, hey y'all, I've missed you. It's been a week. It's been a week. So here we go shall we? Uh, in case you are new here, this channel is really just all about cross stitch, cross stitch, and a little bit of my opinionated chit chat, but I save that till the end. So if you don't want to hear my rants, you are welcome to turn me off like my husband does every time I start jibber jabbering. <laughs> anyway, I hope y'all had a great Valentine's Day. We don't really celebrate, never really have, not my thing chicken wing. Um, I like getting cards in the mail. I love snail mail, but I don't like getting cards for special occasions because I have a box overflowing of cards because you're afraid to throw them away. And um, true story, my eyes itching, forgive me. One year, my husband, two years in a row, he got me the exact same card for our anniversary. He likes funny cards. I like sappy sentimental cards that um, somebody else wrote to tell me how much he loves me and how he can't live without me. So his little um, monkeys and dogs and chickens and everything else that he gets me that's funny. And I tell him every year, I sure do wish you would get me a sappy sentimental card. So, but we do, do, holding it together, um, a spaghetti dinner every year for Valentine's Day. The first year we were married, we were, there's broke, and then there's 10 levels below broke, and that's not even where we were. We got married in college because we were crazy, and our first married Valentine's Day, he was a month from graduating. Um, we had gotten married in August, and he was graduating in March. We were still on quarters back then. That's how old we are. Um, so he was in the thick of the recruiter, headhunter interviewing process. And that night just so happened that I guess this recruiter was a bitter old woman and decided that the phone interview had to happen on Valentine's Day night. Wouldn't have mattered. We couldn't go anywhere anyway. So I made us a spaghetti dinner because what is spaghetti? Cheap. And I served it on our fine china that we had gotten um, as wedding gifts. First time I had used it. Set the table, we had a glass table, we had white fabric chairs because we had no kids. And again, we were dumb. Um, getting married in college, should have just already told y'all that. So sure enough, phone rings as I'm putting the food out. So I'm like, get the call. He goes into um, our little den. Don't think this was a big apartment. Um, and then I put the food on the table, put, put the food on the plates and went to sit with him because I'm nosy. And I felt like he needed my prompting. <laughs> so calls maybe five or 10 minutes. It's just, it was just a preliminary call. And we, he hangs up and we go into the dining room and I had gotten him a miniature dapple dachshund for his birthday slash wedding gift because they were pretty close together. And we look at the table and our mini dachshund had somehow jumped from the floor to the chair, from the chair to the glass table. He had eaten our spaghetti on both plates and he had his little paw perched on my fine china and the plate was tilted up as he was licking the sauce. So that was our first Valentine's um, and it's a great memory and we love it. So for 26 years, I have made a spaghetti dinner and served it on our fine china for Valentine's Day. So um, that is that. What else did we do this week? We had our six and six last weekend, which was tons of fun. Lots and lots of participation. Lots and lots of eye candy for y'all stitching. So Jessica, Sweetwater Stitcher and I, um, again, are so appreciative of you guys um, doing the challenge and hanging out with us this weekend. And for those of you who won prizes, I believe they are all out in the mail now. Uh, so congratulations and thanks again. And we will do it in probably another, maybe another three months. I think we said we were gonna do it quarterly. So there's that. 
And then as one of my projects, I dipped my toe into the project bag making world. Yes, my friend Jess Como Stitches makes me the most beautiful bags, but as my husband has pointed out, um, and somehow I guess he thinks I don't hear him the first 10 times, I have a lot of fabric. So I'm trying to use some of that fabric uh, to make thread books for um, gifts when I go to retreats and some project bags and I don't know, but I'm just trying to use up some of that fabric that his hard-earned money has graciously paid for. I think he said something like that. I'm not sure. So anyway, that is that for this week. Um, Y'all know I uh, am very passionate about my prayer sessions. I understand that um, we are not all of the same faith, but we can all pray or lift up our uh, earthly family because uh, we are all wonderfully and beautifully made. And so a little good wishes, a little moment of silence, of reflection, or of prayer, um, I think helps everybody. So that's my little chit chat on that. Um, I would like to pray again for the victims of the devastating earthquake in Syria and Turkey, as that death toll just astronomical continues to rise. And yesterday um, I read a news report about all of the children that are now orphans. So especially pray for those poor babies that have been through such a traumatic event and lost their mamas and daddies. Um, I'd also like to pray for everyone in East Lansing, Michigan, and especially for the families who lost those three precious babies of theirs uh, to that shooter in East Lansing, Michigan. We pray for the five that are still in the hospital uh, that their recovery is quick um, and just be with, with them for whatever they need. And then, unfortunately, yesterday we had another shooting in El Paso, Texas, at a mall. Um, I believe there was one fatality, um, several injuries. And I, again, this morning read an article where a lady was in the mall that had survived the shooting at the El Paso Walmart a few years ago. Can you believe she was at two shootings in her life? So let's pray for all of them. I reached out to my dear friend Molly from Linen and Scraps to make sure that she was okay. Um, and she wrote me back and said she hadn't been to that mall in years. So um, it's always good to hear from her. But let's keep, we've had a lot this week. Uh, in a week that should be about love and kindness. We hear... Um, just um, had our fifth year anniversary of the Parkland Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting that took 16 uh, students and faculty. Our schools here in Broward County have a half day for remembrance. So that taints our Valentine's Day because you just, that day can't come without remembering those students. But um, Let's keep their families in our prayers as well, because I'm sure I'm sure every day is difficult when you've lost a loved one, um, but the anniversaries of are especially. So those are the prayers that I ask of you this week. And thank you all of you who are encouraging about my prayer section. I haven't had any negative comments so far. Um, I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and we all know what they say about opinions. We all have them. Um, bless y'all's hearts that feel that you need to share your ugly ones sometimes, but that's going to be part of my chit chat. So y'all just gonna have to wait. I know my hair is straight, but I'm feisty. So I'm starting to think that I just might be feisty. I don't know. I should ask my husband, but I don't want to. So we are going on to floss tubers that I would like to recommend. And last week, I don't know if y'all noticed, but I learned to do links in my description and the links worked. I don't know if it'll happen again or maybe just lightning strikes once, but I will try to link the things that I mentioned in my floss tube uh, in my descriptions today. And I do hope that you check them out. So my first one today is Bluebird Paper and Thread. Her name is Stacy, 
and she's got seven videos up. She is also a card maker and a quilter, so her videos have a little bit of everything for y'all. Super good. Again, Bluebird Paper and Thread, and her name is Stacy. Um, this gloss tuber I actually saw a few weeks ago, and I was remiss in mentioning her. When I saw her, it was her first floss tube. She does do quilting videos. Um, and she may have posted one by then. I realized last night that although I had subscribed, I had not turned on notifications. So I click, quickly went to do that. So I will know when she posts again. But her name is Tammy Ernest. Tammy Ernest. And a lot of you may know her from the quilting world. She is a long arm quilter. And I believe she got back into cross stitching maybe two or three years ago, she had, um, like a lot of us, had cross-stitched back in the 80s, early 90s, and then put it away, and then has come back to it. So, she had a few patterns that I already jotted down on my wish list. Um, internationally, because you know I like to look at my friends across the pond, and I like to hear their accents. I don't have one myself. So I'm always jealous of people that have accents. But um, it's Weedy Flower Creations. Weedy Flower Creations. Her name is Karen and she's from Gloucester. Gloucester, butchering that probably. And I am sorry. Um, again, UK, wonderful, wonderful stitcher. This time she was out in her conservatory and it was just beautiful. All those plants behind her. Um, all of mine are fake because I'll kill them. Mm -hmm been doing it for 26 years, so I am pretty confident that I am a flower killer. So, I will link them below. I will put their names across the screen and go check them out. We could all use some more floss tube goodness in our life. Um, for an online shop, and I will show her in my haul, Sophia Violet Designs on Etsy. And she is on Instagram as well, which is how I originally found her. Sophia Violet Designs. And if you're like me, you like something to jazz up your, um, Floss tag rings, I like to uh, put my floss on floss tags because I like to pull a floss. Um, so I like to have something pretty to look at. Who does it? So go check her out, Sophia Violet Designs. And again, I'll post her name across the bottom and I will link her in the descriptions and I'll show you some of my goodies a little later. And we're heading on, we're already at 12 minutes though. I try to make these shorter, um, but I just talk a lot. I don't know if y'all noticed or if you've heard my husband, I think I've mentioned it. I have four fully finished. But why do I only have three here? I don't know. I don't know. Um, my 14th day stitch is done, but I can't find it in this hot mess of a desk. Y'all, I'm not kidding you. I think this room is haunted. Um, because I will search everywhere for something here. Can't find it, can't find it, can't find it. Move on to something else and then come back in the room and it's laying like right on top. Do, 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 do. It's not the mess, it's haunted. So I did finally finish, fully finish my Tiny Town, um, Big Hearty Tiny Town from my Sal. And this is from, y'all have all seen this, from Chantel 141 Design. Um, all I did was I went to Hobby Lobby and I found these little half circles in the unfinished wood section. Glued them on there, spray painted it again, just cause I wanted something a little extra, cause you know me. Um, I may, I may, I had bought this little heart banner at Michael's to do some finishing. So I may drape that banner across the top. And I keep my Valentine's Day out until March 1st, and then I'm gonna start working on uh, the Blooming Tiny Town, and then I will replace that because what I did, and what I always try to do on a lot of these, so that I can reuse it, goodness gracious, I'll just take it off the thing, is I put magnets on the board and washers on the back, and I'll do the same with, with Blooming Town and probably the Patriotic, and then I can use the same board and switch them out. Now, I know a lot of people put their magnets on the cross-stitch section. I don't, because uh, I've heard a lot of people say that the coloring might rub off and put them 
right sides together. I put the washers on mine so I can just wrap it in the tissue paper, put it in my storage bin, put it in my closet, and um, the magnets are always on my wood board. But that's just me. You do you. Big. My kids hate it when I say that. I had FO'd uh, the We Freedom last week. And I had talked about wanting to find some paper to put it on this board, so I did. I went to Hobby Lobby and I found this musical paper and I just decoupaged it onto the board. But I don't like this fabric. I wanted something vintagey. Um, and so I had this ticking. I was trying to use my stash, but I don't like it. This, these stars being ecru and this being so tan is throwing me off. And of course I have aliens glued it. We're gonna see if we can get it off and I'm gonna try to find a different fabric. And that's okay, that's okay. You know, can't hit it out of the park every time. I do like the way it looks on this board. I may put three stars here. Y'all tell me what you think. I have a hard time stopping when I start, but I do feel like it needs something. I mean, I know that some of y'all are like, less is more, but I'm Southern and I grew up in the 80s, so more is more, more is more. Um, I do not subscribe to the, I don't like to put so much on it that it takes away from my stitching, but I don't know. I'm not thrilled with this yet. So I don't think this is a, com this is a full FFO. We may be seeing her again and that's okay because I have time. So, there she is, and this is the ABC from Primrose Cottage, and I did this with Holly Mrs. Jones Stitches and Hannah the Stitching Fairy um, for their sow, ABC Stitch With Me, and I said it last week, I had a hard time putting this one down. I finished stitching it in the six and six, and I think this was maybe at least two good hours, the stitching of my six and six. I'm gonna tell y'all something. I love this now, now. But so many people were finishing it and just doing these beautiful finishes, stunning. I don't know if you have seen Holly, Mrs. Jones can stitch her finish, um, but you need to check it out, stunning. And um, I got in my own head. And I think part of it is because I do try to finish pieces as I do them. And maybe I should give them pause and think about it a little more. Um, so I kind of got a creative block and I could not think of what to do with this or how I wanted to finish it. And I set it aside for a few days. And as I was um, organizing more of my fabric, my daughter just got home from school. Um, I came across this fabric and it's, um, home decor or upholstery fabric that I had. And I thought, oh, this would be perfect with this. So I was going to just make it into a pillow. And I don't know. I just, the idea came into my head and I'm like, I'm going to make a neck roll pillow for it, for the double. So I just took it and I stitched the two, the top and bottom seams and made a roll. I made my own binding with a little bit of the fabric and I sewed it on the edges. And then I did a gathering stitch and pulled it tight on one end, stuffed it with polyfill because y'all have all seen that huge bag of polyfill because I don't know how to read size. And then when it was stuffed, um, I did the same gathering stitch on this side. And then I just took some twine and covered both ends to cover up those running stitches. And here's my pillow. And this is, I think it's going to look fabulous with all of their other um, bee stitches and all of the other bee and honeycomb patterns that are coming out and market. My dough bowl, I might have to even get a bigger dough bowl. <laughs> That's saying a lot. But anyways, I love her. So um, it paid off to just put her to a side um, and not rush the process. So there's something to be learned in that, and maybe I will learn it, maybe I won't, um, you know, but let me see, I'm trying to get my computer back up, it totally timed to back out, 
So those are my FFOs. I've got the We Freedom. I've got the Big Hearted Tiny Town. And I've got my ABC uh, from Primrose Cottage. So not too bad. Not too bad for a week. Uh, let's see. Yep, can't find the, the Valentine's Day one. So let's move on to what we have. Um, my whips are in front of me. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. So my first one is on the 13th, I try to stitch a fall or Valentine's. And this month I picked Happy Fall, y'all. I did start it for the six and six. And I don't know what I was thinking. I know what I was thinking. The picture's tiny. But this is a lot of stitching. This was not just a day stitching. So I did stitch on it a little bit this weekend. I stitched on it on the 13th. Um, and I've been stitching on it a little bit every night. This pumpkin is no joke. but And so you really kind of have to do a line of colors and then come back and fill in. So I'll, I may continue to work on this or I may put it aside and just bring it back out next month on the 13th. Um, it doesn't have to be a brand new one every month. So this is 28 count Joglin that I am stitching on. And it was the call for color. I have done now three. My ABC was on 25 count. And the two winter ones that I did from Primrose were 25 count. So I moved up to 28 and I can stitch just fine on it. I, will, I know I've said this a million times, I eat so much crow. Um, but Contented Needleworker Kim said that your eyes will adjust. And I have heard many stitchers talk about how as you go down in count, your eyes do adjust. So I can do 25, two over one now. I can do 28. When I first start, I, have to, I really do have to give my eyes a minute. I do. But then they adjust and I see it just fine. And I really, really love stitching on 25 and 28 count now. And that's saying a lot for me. I mean, 28 is like a 14 and 25 is like a 12 when you're finished because you're doing two over two. So the size is bigger. You just don't see as much of the, squ of the square. It starts to look a little bit more like fabric. So that is one whip. Now it was a start and then a whip. I did work on my third week of the Mad for Plaid. And again, I'm doing winter. Some people are doing spring. I've seen some people doing the autumn. So I've got winter done. That was this week. And then I've just got the hot cocoa cups. And then this one will be done. And I'm going to keep going and doing a line of week and start my spring. This was 14 count. I don't remember what the fabric was and I apologize. Um, or maybe 16 count. But, so, I'm keeping track on doing that every week. And then, um, Katie the Novel Stitcher has a Best Bunny Sal going on. And I had picked Harriet and Company for my Easter stitch for this month. For, I think I set it for the 18th. And so, um, I'm going to count this for my... Hashtag Best Bunny Sal as well. Harriet and Company. I started her at the six and six. Um, and I usually don't. I, when I stitch, before I call it a night or before I move on to anything, I finish my thread. Um, but last night, my son was not feeling well. He's actually home today. He was coughing up a storm and wanted his mama. And we all know that last week, he did not want his mama to... Um, go to his award ceremony, but last night he wanted his mama, and his mama left her needle. No shame in my game. So here is Harrietta and Company. Um, I was missing apricot blush and rosy petal, and I had ordered it and got impatient because I wanted to do the face, so I substituted, and this is glazed carrot. So this is a little bit stronger of a color. My apricot blush came in and I actually thought about unstitching it, but you know what? I'm okay with her having these cheeks. I kind of like these cheeks. Um, I got to do her eyes because it kind of, I don't like having faces without eyes. And then I was starting on the little Robin 
last night. Isn't she cute? Again, when my son called for his mama and his mama went running. Went running. Almost tripped over my husband. Trying to get to him. He doesn't say anything about my messy room. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's um that's what we've got for this week. I've got three whips now going. I I do have a start. I got the Stitching with the Housewives quarterly stitching, which is um, spring, uh, the houses, but I am doing something a little different with it. So I don't want to show, I've got one house done. I don't want to show that until I'm a little bit further along in my plans so y'all can get my vision. Because my husband has a hard time seeing my vision sometimes of things. I don't think it's me, but just in case, I want to get a little further along before I share my vision with you guys. You know what? I'm throwing him under the table today, and I shouldn't because he really is a great guy. He really is. I mean, he's put up with me for 26 years. He's a saint. Or at least that's what he tells me. Um, so, sounds. I've done, I'm doing the Mad for Plaid, which I showed you. I just completed ABC Stitch with me, which means that there's one sound completely done. Um, so I can choose another, which I have. I have started the Best Bunny sound. And so, um, and I had finished the Tiny, well, I finished Tiny Town, Big Hearted, which let me pick up ABC. And now that one's finished. So I'm going to start, and this is part of my, I think, because I had three charts picked out for this one. Uh, build a house with Mrs. Jones, sound. I, uh, I have a George and Martha Washington by Plum, uh, Plum Street that I was thinking about doing. I have a Sunflower Row from Annie B's Folk Art that I was thinking about doing. And then I got the new Quarterly Housewives this week and I started on that and I do have a house done. So I don't know if I will keep going with that one for this sale or start one of the others. Decisions, decisions. So we're moving right along. Plans. We have our Zoom stitch tonight on the Stitch Your Stash 2023 Facebook page and our featured guest tonight is Chantel with 141 Designs. She and Jessica are gonna be chit-chatting about all things finishing. And because last month we realized that we were limited on our Zoom to 100 participants, they will do their interview in a Facebook Live starting at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So that will give you guys a chance to write in any questions that you have. Um, and as many of you that want to get on the Facebook Live can. Then at 8.30, I will open up a, a Zoom room for anyone who wants to stitch uh, until 10 o'clock. We had it all combined last month. Again, uh, people couldn't get on because we were limited to 100. So we will do the interview on Facebook Live from 8 to 8.30. And if then any of y'all want to get together and stitch, Afterward on a Zoom, I will open up the Zoom room at 8.30. And we are getting a lot of Zoom stitching. Uh, Nancy, the disorderly stitcher, has done a few. Chris, the camping stitcher, I know has done at least one for sure that she has hosted um, the other night, and it was great. And then Carrie, uh, who I got to meet at Annabella's All Things Winter Retreat, and is also part of our stitcher stash family did an evening Zoom last Thursday night that she hosted. So you guys keep your um, eyes and ears open for it. I've seen some of them posted on Instagram and I've seen a lot of them posted on Facebook. I know a lot of us don't like Facebook anymore. I took a break from it, but it is really, for community sake, it's a great place. Um, I have my the.fancifulflamingo Facebook group and I so appreciate all of my new members that um, have been joining and we've been having lots of fun posting pictures. I know Chris the Camping Stitcher has a Facebook group where she does a lot. Jessica Sweetwater Stitcher, Annie the Proper Stitcher, um, Emily 
with salt.pepper.stitching has uh, started a Facebook group. We, of course, have our SYS 2023 Facebook group. So there's lots of places um, for community and fellowship. So you, and the good thing about Facebook groups or any really social media group is that you can be as active as you want to be or as just quiet as you want to be. I mean, you can just, you don't have to, you can do a Zoom stitch and there's a lot of y'all that do come in the room, so turn your camera off, turn your microphone off, but are just kind of stitching because that's what you're comfortable with. Um, some of y'all come in, do turn your camera on, maybe mute your microphone um, and just sit and, and not talk and that's okay. I've had quite a few of you that were really quiet in the beginning and now um, are just a part of it. So you can be as social or as quiet as you want to be in these groups. There's no rules. There's no rules. There's no rules in cross stitch. Okay. I'm not going to say that anymore because I have seen some floss tubes lately complaining about, not complaining, but sort of fussing about stitching their stash and they can buy if they want to buy. Yes, you can. Nobody said you couldn't. Good grief. Um, I, my friend Jody, Felicia, Jessica, at the end of last year, we're just talking about good grief. We have so many patterns and we just keep buying. Maybe we should look at our stash. That was it. That was it, y'all. I didn't go to police cross-stitching police school. I don't carry a baton and a whistle, but golly dang, would I love to have a whistle. Mm, get in trouble. I do not blow my horn in the car. I don't. I don't understand why people do that. And you know your mama taught you better. Sometimes that's what I want to ask these people. What would your mama say if she knew you were honking your horn at people? See, it's not even the straight or curly hair. It is me. My husband's right, Dad. Come it. Mm. So, oh, yo, I told you there's a ghost in here. My Valentine's Day stitch. This was a free chart from... Elizabeth Aaron Designs. I know Kathy Tansy um, has stitched this and finished it into the cutest pillow. She does really cute pillows. I think I want to do a pillow, but I don't know. And even though I do keep Valentine's for the rest of the month, I just don't feel the need to rush and stitch it and put it in my dough bowl right now. Um, I love the aquas with the reds and the pinks. I love it. And this was just... Um, a piece from Stash. It's Yorkshire Ada Gray from Artiste from Hobby Lobby. So um, I used all the call for, call. she used DMC. The pattern uh, was on Instagram. So I took a picture of it and I stitched from the pattern on my phone. Just blew it up and stitched it. And it was a cute, quick stitch. So look, see, there's a ghost. Um, and again, just showing you on my project planner pages and my pictures. Um, so there is that. And sure enough, I did all of these pages at the end of January when I set out my plans for February. And yesterday I started on the housewife stitch, got to stitching it and realized I hadn't done a page for it. So I... It really helps me to, to kind of plan out um, my next month at the end of the month because then I make sure that I have my pages. And I really do like to keep these pages. And I'm just, just trying to do everything where I wouldn't have to turn my back to you. So I, I do apologize. But what I decided is when I finish it, I have this binder and I have these tabs. And here's the start of my scrapbook for the year 2023. So these are my January finishes. And they're all in my book. And I've got my February tab. So at the end of 2023, I will have a sort of a scrapbook of what I've done this year. Uh, so I am, ex I don't know where to put this anymore. I am excited about that. I'm gonna just put it right there. I'm trying really hard not to get off camera anymore. Um, we're ready for haul. And this haul, this came last week, Thursday, right after I finished my floss tube. So I have had these for a week. 
to fawn over. And I know I told y'all that I signed up for the Color and Cotton Floss Club. Well, apparently I signed up for all three. <laughs> and I'm sorry, not sorry. So I've got, I'm in three skeins of the Bright Variegated. And this was February. Then I am in the three skeins of all color. And then I'm in the five skeins of, this is neutral, I think, primitive neutrals. 11 skeins a month of color and cotton. Plus my weeks, plus my classic color works, plus everything I buy. Um, this is from Sophia Violet Designs, and I mentioned her as my Etsy shop. Loved a cross stitch with a little thimble and a button. Isn't that precious? I'm covering her name. So that was one of them that I got. Then I got St. Patty's Day, because I am stitching St. Patty's Day. And I just saw this morning where Primrose Cottage has some new, before market, uh, St. Patty's Day designs. And they are going to be live, I think she said at 12 o'clock Mountain Time. So, um, and then I got this one with the DMC, yeah, the little scissors and the button. And yes, I know it's floss rings, and yes, I know they, they're they in my project bags, but it makes me happy. So I got those three. Then from Stacy Stitches Creative Studio, she is a dear friend of mine. She has um, a website, a shop, and she is also hosting the Beach Please Retreat next February, February 2024. It is literally right around the corner because we're almost at the end of February this year. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. There are still openings for the retreat. I believe it's in Clearwater. You know what? I have her little tag here. Um, Clearwater Beach. It's going to be at the Sheridan Sandy Key Resort from Thursday, February 22nd, 2024 to Saturday, February 24th, 2024. And I will put the information down below for y'all as well. I'm going. I'm going. But I ordered some things for her because y'all know I'm trying to stitch a couple of the Wee Santas and the um, Prairie Schooler Santas this year. And I wanted to start with my kids. And I did not have 2015. And I don't know why I needed 2015 because my son was born in 2010. He was born on the 15th of 2010. Because I went running last night when he needed me. But I probably ordered this when I was angry because he wouldn't let me go to his award ceremony. And other mamas went. That's the worst part. So he got in the car and told me about other mamas being there. I digress. But anyway, I need this anyway. 2015. Isn't that one cute? With the snowman and the cardinal. I love the wee Santas. It's a lot of color changing, but it's worth it. And then I wanted to do stockings for the family. And I had ordered um, from Shepherd's Bush... The Hector back in December. No, I hadn't started on it. Um, but she had Lois. I don't know if this is going to be. I think it's going to be for my daughter. Uh, but it might be for me. I don't know. I'll have to show it to her. But I got this one. So I have two to do at some point. And they came super fast from Stacy. She, um, if she doesn't have something on her site and you want it or you're looking for it and she can get it. She will order it for you and let you know when she com when it comes in. And she is also doing uh, pre-orders for market. And my list is growing every day. But I stitched my stash in January and February, kind of, sort of. Um, I had to go back up to the cross-stitch cover last weekend. Had to. Needed some threads to kit up George and Martha, because I might do that for the build a house with Mrs. Jones. Um, 
Oh, I did. I ordered this one off of eBay because Annie the Proper Stitcher showed it. And I have seen a couple other people show this and I apologize. Um, I thought it was Jessica and she was like, nope, it was Annie. Soul Sisters. And I have been wanting to stitch this one. Couldn't find it anywhere. Went down the eBay rabbit hole, secondary market, found it, ordered it, came in. And I have to go back to the cross stitch cover today for threads. Plus, they called me that my blue corn for my um, anniversary sampler has come in. I couldn't finish it because I ran out of thread. So, I got to go get that. Um, so, this is the Stitching with the Housewives. They're quarterly um, houses. And I'm not going to show you what's in here because I don't know if everybody's gotten it yet. You know, with the weather, there have been shipping delays. But you get fabric. You get a piece of finishing. Um, you get a little, another tag for your floss ring. You get this sweet little bag. And, of course, the um, Classic Color Works threads and the pattern. So, I got this in. And I ordered this. I signed up for this. I think in November when it was available. So I've got a lot of stuff in this week. I didn't order it this week, honey. But I did order from my friend Jody, Simply Stitching Ocala. Um, she did another um, sale on Instagram of her Oort bags. And you know we're all stitching the bees. So I had to get her Oort, her bee Oort. Duh. My leftover string can't just go in any old thing. And then I've had several, several people ask me where I get my bags. And I think I've always said it, Jess from Como Stitches. Um, so my friend Jess, for all of the bee sales and all of the bee releases and for our stitch along that is coming up at the beginning of March, the Hive Rules, um, I ordered this bag. And I get, I always get the Threadkeeper. Um, and she put a little bee. And let me tell you, after doing two project bags this weekend, look at her zippers, how evenly they are stitched. There is the same amount on each side. That is hard, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And then I ordered this bag from her. Because this screams spring. And look at... I mean, even she... She, even her inside fabrics. I'm going to show y'all again. Jess, come on stitches. Look how even her zippers are stitched. And there's no extra fluff. Like, she cuts it just perfectly. You know how I know that? Because I know that. And then, ah, I was able, actually, there's a story with this. This is from Jill Weston, 1959. Holly, Mrs. Jones, Stitches mom who has monthly sales on Instagram. I was not fast enough and I tried. I was refreshing my computer. I was refreshing my phone. I was considering letting my son walk five miles home from school because um, I wasn't going to make it to Carline and bet on these. And I did not get any. I was not first. My friend Jody was and she was actually got two. And she was going to be gracious enough to let me have one. Um, but another lady had also been first on several, um, and didn't need them all and very graciously put them back in. And I happened to have been second on that one. So it just went down to the next person and I was able to get this one. So just unexpected, but thrilled, thrilled. And then my last little bit of haul, and I took a picture of this yesterday. I had to drop some things off at Goodwill. Um, and so, of course, you can't drop off and not go in. And the, the Goodwill by my house is horrible. Horrible. Never. But I did find this picture. And there was a time when I had pictures like this in my house in South Carolina. Nothing wrong with the picture. But I, it was the frame. And I'm going to tell y'all. I've got a lot of flat frames on clearance at Hobby Lobby lately, um, and they aren't the right size. So I am going to watch. I know Kim, the contented needleworker, has 
uh, I think I just saw where she did a tutorial on how she cuts her frames that I'm going to watch. Um, and then I'm going to explain to my husband what he needs to do um, to cut down the frames that I have bought that are the wrong size, but that I still want to use. See? Vision. Clear as day. But I bought this one. It's holding my breath because I was really, really hoping that it would work and it's gonna. Yeah, I know, but that doesn't matter about the back because I gotta take it off anyway. My anniversary sampler. Going to get the thread today, just gotta finish that bottom row. And then it, look how beautiful it is gonna be in here. Absolutely stunning. And my husband is going to look at this every time he passes by our wedding picture. And I know it's going to bring him to tears. I know it is. He may think he's crying for other reasons, but I know it's out of just sheer joy and um, remembrance of that day. Y'all know it. And then I got some happy mail from my friend Pam Brown. Uh, I met Pam again at the All Things Winter Retreat. We instantly bonded over being Georgia girls, even though I'm a Georgia Tech yellow jacket and she's a Georgia bulldog. We can overlook those differences because we are all God's children. But she sent me a Nora Corbett uh, pattern that she had bought extra uh, that she is going to let me graciously um, gift. But that wasn't all. The box came, and my husband looked at me because the box was like this. I was like, I, no, I didn't order anything in that box. But she knows, and she and I both collect Annalise. And look what she sent me. <laughs> we do look alike. She said it reminded her of me when she saw it. Y'all, I'm too silly. I apologize. Um, for my silliness, but, um, she sent me. And the only reason she's not on my shelf today is because I didn't want to turn my back on you 50 million times, but, uh, she's, I already display her proudly and she will be up all year long. So thank you, sweet Pam. We are going to the Teresa Koga All Things Spring Retreat, and I'm going to try to get my flight to connect through Hartsville so we can meet up in Hartsville and then fly to Michigan together. Um, and she is just... A wonderful soul, and I'm so blessed to call her my friend. So that is it for all of that this week. Um, let's let's chit chat for a minute. We're at 47 minutes already, so I'll make it fast. I got in my head this week. I told y'all about finishing and comparing myself to others. I love floss tube. Obviously, I am a floss tuber because I like to listen to myself talk, and nobody else around here will listen to me. Uh, I'm negative about my family today, and I don't like that. I apologize. I do. I mean it in fun, um, but I'm very blessed with the family that I have. But um, I got in my head. I watch Floss Tube. I do it to see new Floss Tubers, to visit with my friends. I mean, you visit with me. I like to see what other people are working on. I like to get ideas, and I like to get finishing ideas. But... This weekend, with this doggone pattern, I got in my head. And I think I see a lot of creators on social media, and they talk about the imposter syndrome. And that's where you start to get in your head and doubt that you can do this. And you think, well, everybody's already done everything. Who am I? And I got in my head that way this week. And if you were my friend and you did that, I would poo-poo it and I would talk you out of it. And I would tell you you're being ridiculous. Um, and though I talked to myself a lot, I just wasn't listening to myself. And I got into this, you make the same pillows all the time and they're not even that great. Look at everybody else and look at all the beautiful pillows they're making. If you've watched Nicole Spore this week, gorgeous pillows. If you watch Primrose Cottage, gorgeous pillows. Um, again, Jessica Provost to me is a great finisher. Holly Jones is a great finisher. Annie, the proper stitcher. And I'm not even talking about Vonna Pfeiffer and Helen D. Because we all know they're at next level. Okay. Um, and I just got in my head and I was like, who do you think you are? 
And why do you even have a floss tube? And why do you even show things like they're any great thing? That's the dangerous hole and the devil on my shoulder that got me this weekend. And I talked to my husband about it. And I know I give him a hard time. He is my voice of reason. He's Mr. Calm, Cool, and Collected. Um, he never gets panicky. He is an engineer, so he's quite methodical when he thinks things through. And I am chicken little. And he said, why, why are you doing this to yourself? Uh, do you like what you do? I said, I do. I love it. You know, I do. Cause I, you tell me I do it all the time and I don't stop for anything. And he said, then that's all that matters. If you enjoy it and you like it and it's in your home and we like it, um, then, well, of course he'd be afraid to tell me he didn't. Hmm. He said, then why does it matter? And I looked at him, dead in the eyes, and I said, you are a wise man. I know y'all weren't expecting that, neither was he. Cause I thought, <laughs> the look on his face, he was like, dear God, Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you. This is what a stroke feels like. It only took me 26 years to say that, but he was right. I said, I cross-stitch for me and for my enjoyment and to keep me from stabbing you guys with a needle. And that really is all that matters. And so I'm saying that to you today. Um, watch us. Enjoy it. Talk back to us. Comment and let us know what you're thinking. But don't ever hold yourself up to anybody else's standards but your own. Because your own standards are perfect. Are perfect. You don't need anybody else's approval. You don't. Uh, and if you look for it nine times out of ten, you're not going to get it. Or you're not going to get it in the way that you want it. So, talk to yourself. Give yourself a pep talk. Preferably when other people aren't around. Because other people sometimes don't understand when you're talking to yourself in a pep talk. Um, I'm assuming. I don't know from personal experience. But, um... It's so hard to do. It's so hard to do to not hold ourselves up to other people's expectations. Um, and so I got down on myself this weekend, but my husband helped me get my head on straight again. And I went right back to stitching and enjoying it and watching floss tubes and just being happy with that, what I create for myself. I don't create for anybody else. I don't sell it. Um, I don't really gift it because... I don't really have anybody to gift it to. I mean, my children are getting all of this when I die. Uh, and I know they're so, I've told y'all before, they they argue about who's getting it. Like, they, I might have to make double of everything because I'm assuming that's what they're arguing about. Um, my other little piece of chit chat, it hurt my heart. I watched the Saltbox Stitcher Carol's last video. And she mentioned that she had gotten some nasty trolls. I didn't start out as a sampler stitcher. In fact, when I started out and I started going to the cross stitch cupboard, they didn't hold an interest to me at all. And partly because I was stitching gnomes off of Etsy on 14 count. And I would look at samplers and be like, mm -mm, not me, no ma'am, never. I'll never be able to do that. And I have stitched samplers and I've stitched them on Ada. And I can do it. And I love them now. And part of my love of samplers came from watching Carol, the Saltbox Stitcher. And um, Kimberly, Contented Needlework. Because we all know that I am going to move into her house one day while she is away and sit in her room with all of her samplers but that's a whole nother story for me and the police to figure out later um but some people had said some nasty things to care about why her husband is on her videos i love him and i love their interaction because they remind me of my husband and i and the fact that he wants to bring her coffee and sit with her and that he wants to help her with her introduction 
Y'all, that's love. And that is hashtag marriage goals. And she also said that people had complained that she was too religious. I'm not sure you can be. And again, I'm not talking about your faith, your denomination. But when you go, when you leave this earth, if you believe that there is a higher being, I don't think you're going to meet him and he's going to say, you were too religious. He's not. Now, I don't mean you go around judging everybody. And I don't mean that you go around quoting the Bible or whatever book that you read from to benefit yourself. Because there's a lot of them out there too. Ooh, I'm getting on my soapbox. But I asked for prayers at the beginning of my floss tube. When I did it, I knew it would turn some people off. I knew perhaps that I wouldn't get followers that other people have, but I'm not in it for the followers. I'm in it for my friends that come back week after week. And my friends that come back week after week know that I have a minute at the beginning of every episode where I ask for prayers. And I will continue to do that. And if that's not your cup of tea, I certainly respect you 100%. I'm not going to apologize for what I do. There's 882 other floss tubers that you can watch if I'm not your cup of tea. And I completely understand. I do. But I am grateful for all of you who choose to spend some time with me every week. I'm going to believe that it was just a troll that was just trying to get a reaction. And I hope that you like the reaction you got because you made my friend cry. And you made me mad. And my family will tell you, you don't want to make me mad. I am a Southern mama bear. And when you poke this bear, all of her fluff rises to the occasion. Count on it. So, shame on you for whoever you were that left those comments. And I'm going to ask you, would your mama be proud of you? Is that who your mama raised? Because I don't think so. I've never met a mama that raised her child to be hateful and ugly. So, before you post a comment and hide behind your computer, you ask yourself, would my mama be proud of me? And if your answer is no, do not type it. Do not say it. You can think it. In fact, I'm going to give you a little, a little thing that's going to help you. And not with Carol, but when someone gets your goat and you shake your head and you think, you bought a crayon pack that was missing a couple colors, you just look that person straight in the eyes. You smile your biggest smile. And you say, bless your heart. And that's it for me today, y'all. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for some sharing your coffee with me. I had Pop-Tarts. Mm -hmm. It's strawberry Pop-Tarts. That is a fruit. That is on the uh, food pyramid. It's a fruit. It's healthy. I had coffee that comes from a bean. That's a vegetable. Bless your heart. Y'all have a great weekend. And I hope I get to see you again next week. Bye.